Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistad. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media for great production content. In this tutorial, I wanted to get away from some of the physical how-tos of machine and instead look at some ways of creative idea development. How can we build out songs and ideas using some of the intrinsic tools that machine gives us, both with the hardware as well as in the software to build things out creatively. Now, normally we start with maybe an instrument or a beat or a drum kit that we've built out a simple thing or a sample. And those are all really awesome ways of getting started. But sometimes we just can't get started with an idea. There's some cool tricks we can use to kind of get past that. And one of them is to build out a form and a texture and just lay out what happens where in a particular song and then come in and start adding parts. So what do I mean by that? I mean that we can figure out using groups, what are the parts that we're gonna have in our song and then using scenes, what's the form and the arrangement of the song. And so to get started, we just come over here and let's just go ahead and pick a whole bunch and name them out. So maybe we'll have a main drum kit and maybe we'll have an accent kit or percussion. Obviously we're probably gonna want a bass, some type of pad. And so this could be whatever you want, whatever kind of things you're thinking of as far as a particular arrangement. So maybe we'll do some type of gated synth, vocal sample. How about congas and some kind of electro topper line, and whether it's a synth or hi-hat, who knows? We'll figure it out. What we've done now is we've decided, okay, these are some of the sounds I wanna use in my arrangement. And now I can say, how's the arrangement gonna go? And let's just build out some basic scenes and patterns that don't actually have any content in them. We're just literally going to look at the visual representation of the arrangement and kind of give ourselves a nice starting template to build from. And so we'll do the same thing we did with laying out a bunch of groups. Let's go ahead and just lay in a bunch of scenes. We can call these whatever we want. We're gonna probably, as we get into the actual creating section, we'll probably come in and start moving them around, manipulating them, changing the lengths of things. But again, the idea here is we're building out a visual representation of what's happening. Let's start with scene one, that's probably gonna be some type of intro. So maybe the drums don't have much going on in there. Maybe we'll start with an accent part. So we'll just go add a pattern and then maybe we just name that accent intro. And naming things as we go is really important because it gives us this visual reference of what's gonna happen. Probably don't want the bass in there at first and maybe the pad. So let's go ahead and add one in there and I can just double click in there. Let's say we add in that electro topper as well. All right, cool. And then maybe how does that build up? In scene two, let's say maybe this part will continue. So we just come over here to the next scene and add that in again. And then same thing with, say, choose our pad. We can say we want that to continue in there. We can also just do this from the keyboard by coming, of course, coming over here like this and just selecting them like that. So we don't actually need to be in the hardware. I find the hardware can be a very nice visual reference though. And let's say at this point, We'll tease that vocal sample. And we'll also bring in Kaga's intro. Cool, and so now we've basically got an intro, so we can go ahead and name that out. Intro, and then maybe intro build. And then, so now we know that this is probably gonna be our first verse or our first section. We call it maybe verse or you know A section or what have you. What happens in there? We'll say we got our, a full beat coming in, in fact, we can just come in and add a whole bunch of these. And leave a couple of things out, but now we've got an idea, just naming that drum A. And you know, maybe we actually don't want that bass in there just yet. We'll bring that in maybe a little later on. In fact, we'll bring that over here, bass in. And so this is gonna be a different pattern. So we'll just go ahead and name that call that pad A. And we can say that maybe that also happens in this one here. And so we can see we're just starting to build this thing out. And maybe over here, instead of drum A, we can go pattern two. One thing I like to do, however, instead of going over here, put it up here. So these are variations and these are actually different sections moving over this way. And so we'll call this drum A. And we use that prime symbol, just like that. And so this one, we probably want a different one. This is a different section, so I'll go to this side and we'll say accent A. And maybe here, we'll do a variation on that. Accent A prime. Let's see here, what else do we have? Maybe we'll save that for the hook. Um, 
So we'll say this is A prime. So when I, again, I keep saying A prime, that means it's just a slight variation of the A section. I know it's got most of the same parts, but there are some slight variations and differences. So for this one, we probably want a new section, Vox A, and maybe we'll just keep this one exactly the same. So just like that. Here, different section. This will maybe be Congas A, and this one a different section. In fact, you know what? Maybe we'll just pull that out of there for here, and we'll maybe bring that in over in this other section, which is probably going to be our B section, whether it's a hook or a chorus, kind of depends on the genre we're working on. But we're just calling it A and B for right now because we don't know what we're going to put in there yet. And so here, yeah, another section. This is an actual B section. Just like this. And we've got, so we can now name this bass B section or hook bass or what have you. And maybe for a little bit more sparseness in that sound so we can hit it harder, we'll leave that pad out of there. But instead we'll bring in that gated synth. bring in a different vocal section entirely. Box hook. And so one of the things we can do if we got a thing that we know is going to be mostly the same, maybe we just duplicate that. So now we can have that variation. And for each of these we can come over here and just start making our adjustments. Again, maybe we duplicate here. And this is B prime, etc. You can see what we're doing. I'm building out this basic section, and then I'm building this visual representation of what will be happening here. And I'm building new ideas out this way, and I'm building variations on ideas up this way. And so I can just maneuver through, just like this on the hardware, and I can choose my sections as I go through. But I'm not actually writing anything yet. I'm literally writing it in terms of arrangement or the form, as well as texture or the layering of what elements are happening at what points of the song. I encourage you to give this a shot. It's a really kind of liberating way of working because when it comes time to actually writing it, it's really straightforward. You just have to play paint by numbers and you've already decided what those sections are and what the, where the numbers go. And you can also take existing stuff, maybe some of the machine projects that come you know, with a particular expansion or with the machine library and just remove parts entirely. And so you can actually work from a different pre-existing arrangement, but I guarantee it'll sound nothing like the original project when you're done, especially if you start swapping out instruments. You know, keep the drums where the drums are, but different kit, different patterns. Same thing with the bass, same thing with pads or whatever. But it's a great way to actually approach your composition from a different creative approach and get a different perspective on it. And I think you'll find some neat ways of looking at stuff. So hopefully this is useful for you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on the YouTube page. And make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. Thanks again, I'm Steven Ellistet. Have a great day.